One of the great parts about Clarice is you can bring in volumes and see what they're going to look like in your final scene without having to kind of guess what they look like and use bounding boxes to place them. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can work with volumes inside of Clarice. So to import your volume, you're gonna go up to file, import and volume, and then you can just select your VDB. I have a, a VDB that I've used in a recent project here, just something that I created inside of Houdini. And I'm going to just use this to illustrate everything for us today. So right away we have the VDB. And then if you look over here, it's setting the density to our density channel. So you will need to make sure you got your density channel for your VDB. And then you have some other settings here. You can change this. Let's say you want to do use the temperature for some reason or velocity and do some weird things there. You can do that, but let's go ahead and leave that on density for now. You can also change the density multiplier basically. Um, so, or the density, I guess, of your, of your object here. So let's, let's actually go to our image view here. So by default, you're going to have this little square check, just uncheck that so you can see it a little bit better and your background will be nice and black. So if I just go select our object here and go to this density offset, we can change this. It's going to change the density of our object. Obviously, as we get closer to zero, it's going to lower our density uh, quite a bit or closer to, I guess, where it's going to fully disappear because that's uh, below zero. But uh, as you bring it up, it's going to increase the density of your object as well, as well as the density multiplier will also affect that. So by default, this doesn't have a volume uh, shader attached to it. So let's go ahead and create one of those. So we'll right click and type volume and create that. We can just drag that onto our object here. And you can see now if I actually go back to this and increase our density offset, you can see it's a lot more dense at 10 than it is at one. So just use those settings. You can also affect those uh, same type of settings here with the density multiplier in your volume shader. So if I bring that up to 10, you're going to see we have the same type of result as we have with a 10 and the density offset. So let's set that back to one for now. And we also have these different modes. So we have artistic, physicist, and legacy. So if I go ahead and set this to physicist, this is going to be uh, more physically accurate to the way that light actually works. Legacy is an old uh, mode that shouldn't be used. It's a deprecated uh, mode, so don't use that one. But uh, artistic also is a, an option that you can choose and that will allow you to get further control um, without um, actually having everything be fully accurate to the way that light works. So kind of lets you break the the realism barrier and go more into the artistic uh, look side of things. So let's go ahead and look at some of these a little bit more in depth here. Um, before we do that, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this scattering option. So we have this forward scattering that we can affect here. So as I bring this up towards uh, 100%, it's going to change the way that scattering works. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. As I bring it back to closer to negative 100, I actually have a sphere light in our scene here. You can see it's placed kind of over here and kind of behind our volume. So if I bring this closer to negative 100, you're gonna see that the light gets closer to, or the scattering gets more uh, intense towards the light, or less intense, I should say, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's, it gets darker towards the further uh, away you get from the light and uh, it's brighter obviously towards the light. So you can play with that to get some different looks as well. And let's go ahead, take a look at these absorption and scattering uh, settings now. So if you use any other renders, these probably are pretty familiar to you. So you have your scattering and this is how much your uh, object is going to scatter light. So as you bring this closer to black, it's going to get darker and darker. That's because it is 
just kind of uh, absorbing or yeah I guess it's kind of absorbing all of the light so it's uh, or none of the light I should say no no sorry scattering none of the light absorbing all of the light you just uh, have just a an invisible object when you bring that to black so if you want your object to actually show up make sure you have it above uh, plain black you can also bring this up towards one to absorb more light and it's going to kind of brighten up your object a little bit or uh, darken up your object I mean and then as you bring it to black it's going to brighten up your object so you can also change the color here so if we change the color you see that it's working kind of opposite of how you might initially think so with uh, blue setting here it's going to be this kind of uh, orangish color that's because it is uh, absorbing this light. So if you think about the way light works, it's going to reflect um, whatever color is, is not being absorbed, I guess. Uh, so the, this VDB is gonna absorb blue. So if you take blue out of the white light, it's going to give you this orange color. If I set this over to orange, you're going to see that it's turning a more uh, bluish in color. So opposite of what you might think. If you get a little bit confused, let's say you want it to be pink, you can just go over to pink and then you realize that it's turning green. Just uh, flip flop those and you have your different settings. You can also change the scattering absorption here. And this is going to be an overall kind of color change to your entire uh, VDB so you can get some cool looks going here uh, so you're gonna want to color these settings if you're trying to create something like a nebula you're gonna get some cool cool looks by doing that let's go ahead and click OK and let's set this over to the artistic mode and you see that our, our settings have changed automatically um, with the way that we were changing our absorption and scattering and that's because they're all linked to get together so if I can change these as well and you're gonna see over here our absorption and scattering is changing as well. So you can get some different looks. You can also make these settings go negative. Let's see if I can find any. Maybe it is in the albedo. You can get these settings to go negative in the absorption. Um, that's kind of where it breaks the light barrier. I don't know what the, what the actual settings are, but you can get the settings to um, to go negative in the absorption and scattering, and uh, that's why it's not fully um, accurate to to the way light actually works, because you obviously wouldn't have any negative values in these two settings with the way light actually works. But anyways, you can also do some stuff with, like I said, the attributes. So let's do an extract property I can type. So I don't actually have any set up here because this didn't have any temperature on it, but I do have the temperature field, obviously. So you can, if I actually pipe that into a mission, will kind of give us something here. So you have all of the different um, settings that you had from whatever program you exported it from. So I ex exported it from Houdini. So I had these different settings in Houdini and uh, I can use them all inside of Clarice as well. We do have uh, some cool um, non-physical things that you can do with this. Obviously, this is a little more artistic, um, not something we necessarily would want to do. But let's go ahead and set that back to something like that. We can also use the gradients to actually change some of these settings. So maybe we'll set this to a purple or a, a pink, I mean, and then we'll set this to like a blue and maybe we'll set this to like a yellow. And you can see it's just remapping our object, our emission channel. And let's actually, this isn't gonna actually affect it. So you have to go into these to actually affect it. If you wanna kind of darken things up a little bit, you can do that as well. So you can get some, some cool looks going by messing with these settings as well. And just uh, wiring in your gradients to the, um, let's say you wanna use them for the attenuation or albedo or maybe absorption or scattering. You can use your different settings and uh, 
create a gradient and control it inside of Clarice as well to give you some some cool looks like uh, like this. So that's just a, a basic introduction to to volumes inside of Clarice. Uh, there is a bunch more you can do with this, like uh, if you want to create fireballs and stuff like that, uh, you can definitely do some shading stuff to do that. I'll be going over that probably in another video. I would like to um, make something on, on that, but a little bit more in depth and with some other stuff. So I'll save that for another time. But uh, for now, this is should be enough to get you started working with uh, volumes inside of Clarice. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the comments, uh, as well as I do have a Discord now. Uh, I got a couple of people in there that are uh, talking quite a bit and asking some good questions, uh, making some good suggestions as well. So if you guys wanna join us in the Discord, uh, the link will be in the description for you guys to join. Uh, I can ask any sort of questions that you might have in there. I'm definitely more readily available there than I am uh, here in the comments on YouTube. So. Just uh, feel free to hop in there if you want and share your artwork as well. But anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel about Clarice and Houdini and Redshift and uh, Cinema 4D as well. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure you check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.